How do you do? Ollie here, and I've got a loaf of bread straight out of the oven for you. Today's loaf of bread comes to us from the poet and mystic Khalil Gibran, and he says, If you would indeed behold the spirit of death, open your heart wide unto the body of life. For life and death are one, even as the river and the sea are one. For what is it to die but to stand naked in the wind, and to melt into the sun? And what is it to cease breathing, but to free the breath from its restless tides, that it may rise and expand and seek God unencumbered? Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing. And when you have reached the mountain top, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your limbs, then shall you truly dance. Now, as usual, Khalil Gibran's poetry is beautiful and sublime. And if you don't listen and read carefully, you might miss all of these wonderful and subtle little things that he says in this passage. The entire second half of the quote is basically him trying to say that the end of your life is actually the beginning of something far more wondrous. And he uses some very beautiful images to convey this message. You know, he says, when you get to the top of the mountain, then you'll start to actually climb. Or when the earth takes your body back, in other words, when you're buried in the dirt, then you'll begin to really dance. He also says, what is it to die but to melt into the sun? In other words, to become one with everything. What does it mean to die but to free the breath from its restless tides? You know the tide. In and out. For 90 years, the breath is trapped in this tide. In and out. In and out. And when you die, the breath is freed and it is allowed to seek God unencumbered. That is unhindered by this body that we drag around every day. I won't lie, this is very comforting for me. And in my mind, this is the best solution to the problem of mortality that I can think of. And in case it's not clear, my solution is to view death as no problem at all, as simply the start of another different type of experience. An experience that I'm sure I will enjoy as much as I'm enjoying the experience of being alive today in a human body. The practical use of not only this quote, but my overall belief in death is that it eliminates all anxiety regarding my death, not regarding the death of others. I haven't found a way to fully alleviate that anxiety, but when it comes out to my own passing, I'm quite comfortable with the eventuality of it. I'm not afraid of that moment, and in fact, I view it as sort of the greatest adventure that one can undertake. The other thing that this quote hints at, or conveys at least in part, is the idea or the attitude of non-duality. Now, non-duality is something I haven't even mentioned once in these videos yet. It's a very slippery and difficult concept to explain, but as an attitude or a mindset, when you are able to adopt it, or at least filter most of your life events through the lens of non-duality, then it eliminates unnecessary suffering in a big way. Non-duality requires a flexible mindset. You have to be comfortable with looking at things from many different perspectives and not settling on a single one. Because if you settle on a single perspective, you are falling into the trap of dualism. You are asserting one point of view at the expense of others. So to give you an example, the dualistic view is that there is something called life and that there is an opposite thing called death. And these two things are distinct. They are diametrically opposed, if you will. The non-dualistic view is the one expressed by Khalil Gibran in this quote which is to say that life and death are merely opposite ends of a single spectrum. The spectrum of being. The spectrum of existence. And you can talk about death, and you can talk about life, but really they are one and the same. 
And so when you view life and death as one, it changes your view of both. And you stop to dread the one and you start to celebrate the other. If you constantly think about death and contemplate it in this way, in the non-dualistic way, then you rob it of its terrifying appearance because you realize that it's merely the flip side of the coin of life and without the one you wouldn't have the other so if you like living then by default if you have a non-dualistic attitude or mindset you kind of have to love death too because you can't separate the two well that's enough of my death talk hope you enjoyed the quote at least hope that I was able to give you some food for thought or some kind of novel idea that maybe you haven't considered before. If not, I'll do my best to get you next time. Until then, live well, my friends.